Thanks for joining us today. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Lee ji in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first take a look at today's highlights. We take an in-depth look at the Korean economy's mid-year report card and what needs to be done in order to get it back on track in the remaining half of the year. Foreign automakers are looking to appeal to younger people here in Korea with stylish, premium, compact cars. We begin with the latest on that legal battle between Samsung and U.S. hedge fund Elliott. The first round went to Samsung as a local court cleared a legal hurdle for the conglomerate to push ahead with a merger among its affiliates, deemed vital for a smooth leadership transition. The Seoul Central District Court on Wednesday handed U.S. hedge fund Elliott a defeat in the first injunction it filed, saying the proposed share swap ratio between JL Industries and Samsung CNT was set and compliant with existing laws. Now, Elliott, the third largest stakeholder of Samsung CNT, claims the merger undermines the interest of the construction arms shareholders. The court said it will rule on a separate injunction involving the sale of CNT Treasury shares before mid-July. Meanwhile, amid uncertainties in Greece, including its possible exit from the Eurozone, the default risk of developing economies has gone up as of last month. And while Korea was no exception, it had the lowest spike among the 13 emerging markets. According to financial information provider Market, Korea's credit default swap or CDS premium for foreign exchange stabilization bonds with a five-year maturity was at 51.4 basis points. Points. That marks an on-month rise of 7.6%, though on-year, Seoul's default risk actually fell by 4.3%. We've been seeing the number of small cars here on the roads of Korea rising gradually over the years, but the popularity of compact cars was mainly confined to domestic brands. This is now changing as more foreign automakers are entering the market with more options to choose from. Our Lee ji has the story. This is the latest version of BMW's 1 Series hatchback that rolled out in Korea last month, but it comes with a sharper exterior and enhanced performance. You can't see it, but the engine and gearbox have been upgraded, so it offers a more dynamic driving experience. Another German car brand, Audi, has unveiled the smallest car in its entire lineup, the new A1. This is Audi's premium hatchback, which can appeal to consumers in their 20s and 30s. While German car brands are well known in Korea for their mid to big size vehicles, they're now zoning in on the compact car market, targeting younger consumers looking for efficient models that come with stylish designs but lower prices. According to Korea Automobile Importers and Distributors Association, the sales volume of smaller 2,000cc cars accounted for about 55% of total imported cars in the first five months of this year, up 25 percentage points on year. The association added the premium image of foreign brand cars and their relatively cheap price range around the $18,000 mark appeal to those in the younger age bracket. Audi Korea forecasts that demand for its premium small cars will continue to grow in Korea, reaching over 10,000 units annually between 2018 and 2020. Latching onto this trend, Korean car manufacturers like Hyundai Motor and GM Korea are projected to release new small vehicles in the coming months, further intensifying competition between domestic and foreign car companies. Lee ji Business Daily. The first half of this year has already gone by, and looking back at the first six months of this year, many would say that the Korean economy went through a lot of downs than ups due to various internal and external factors. Let's take a look at what some of those are. How did Koreans feel about the domestic economy in the first half of this year? According to a recent survey by the finance ministry, more than half of the experts they asked felt the Korean economy has gotten worse compared to last year, whereas most members of the public didn't feel much of a change. Although Korea's GDP rose by a seasonally adjusted 0.8 percent in the January to March period on quarter, experts say such growth wasn't enough to boost the real economy. Then what were some economic factors that impacted the Korean economy the most in the first half of this year? 
First is the Bank of Korea's record low-key interest rate, sitting at 1.5 percent. We decided to take preemptive measures in order to alleviate potential negative effects on Korea's real economy as well as on sentiments of economic agents. But there are growing concerns this could worsen the country's already massive household debt problem. Slumping exports are another factor as they saw their worst annual fall in nearly six years in May amidst lower growth in China and a weak Japanese yen. And last but not least, the MERS outbreak. The virus, which has claimed the lives of more than 30 people so far, has led to a scale back in spending and a dip in foreign tourists. Just last week, Korea's finance ministry announced a stimulus package of more than 13 billion U.S. dollars, including a supplementary budget. With all these factors, will the Korean economy be able to get back on its feet in the second half of this year? And to tell us more about what we can expect in the second half of this year, we're now joined by Professor Shin Se-don of Sungmyung Women's University. Welcome to the program. Good morning. All right, so the Korean government is saying that the domestic economy is slowly but surely picking up, but people really haven't been feeling the signs of recovery so much. Mm -hmm. Why so? Well, I think the positive view of the government, I mean the glimmer of uh, recovery, is because they are looking on a uh, relative to other country because 3% or 3.1% growth is relatively high compared to other country. But, but, but the people looking at the trends from the early last year, mm -hmm. if you look at the number, the growth rate, uh, consumption, investment, in every aspect, the growth rate uh, growth rates are actually coming down. So people are, uh, are looking at you know, on a comparative stance, on, on a time basis. So the, every quarter, you know, economic indicators is coming down, but the country, I mean, the government is looking compared to other countries. That's why a slightly different, you know, opinion about the economic situation right now. All right. Well, moving on, the MERS outbreak is mm -hmm. considered one of the worst factors that hit the Korean economy in the first half of this year. And obviously, it definitely took a toll on local retail and tourism sectors. When do you think the country will be able to recover from the economic fallout of well, MERS? Well, first, you know, how uh, fast and how drastic the supplementary budget will be implemented in, in, in the Congress. That's one thing. But uh, the effect of uh, you know, MERS on the tourism convention, on the cultural activities, those kind of effects hasn't been, has been borne out yet. So we will see on the second quarter, especially the third quarter will be uh, severely uh, uh, devastated be because of the MERS effects. So I think the numbers on third quarter from, from month of July until September, mm -hmm. I think that is the key figure how fast or uh, how, how, you know, uh, the severe the MERS effect will be uh, throughout this year. So I think uh, the effect will be going on at least a co couple of months mm -hmm. from July and uh, August. Okay. And uh, probably it will continue because the foreign tourists coming to Korea, they have, they have revised their entire annual plan for, you know, vacation. So I think the uh, tourism industry will be uh, 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 severely devastated uh, throughout this year. This year, okay. Well, and like you said, the Korean government plans to inject more cash to revitalize the Korean economy. Mm -hmm. How much do you think this will help, this extra stimulus? Well, at the moment, the, the amount of supplementary budget will be around the 15 trillion Korean currency, which is about 13 some plus uh, uh, billion dollars. But important thing is, you know, the, the number, amount of the supplementary budget is not 100% for MERS effect. Right. The substantial portion of that is to replenish the sluggish revenues from the taxes. And also, if you look at the government plans, um, a substantial portion of the amount of money is 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 being poured into some uh, other measures like uh, export mm -hmm. or um, you know job creation for the youth. So uh, as long as MERS effect is concerned, um, uh, I think the proportion of the money devoted to MERS effect will be uh, relatively small. So on that respect, I think uh, well. 
you know, it, it, still it has to be passed by the government, right. I mean the, the Congress, but uh, I have a slightly negative because we had previously had a supplementary budget in 2013, but the effect hasn't been very dramatic. So, uh, but still, you know, it's we need that. Nothing. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, what are some external factors that could impact the Korean economy in the second half of this year? First, uh, U.S. High, high, uh, rate hike, you know, expected to be coming in September. And uh, it, that's not going to be the one one time measure. I mean, it, the rate hike will continue number of times. Historically, it's more than 10 times. So um, the rate hike is expected throughout uh, throughout the couple of years down the road. Mm -hmm. And another thing is the Greek event, Greek, Greek crisis. Yes. And so. Uh, so we, we, we won't be able to predict how the Greek event will turn out, but uh, still that is the potential danger. Another thing is uh, China, or I call it uh, China blues, because the Chinese economy has been suffering uh, for some time and uh, we, we don't see uh, any you know, bright uh, future uh, in the in future. So China is going to have a tremendous effect upon Korean, especially exports. So rate hike, that Greek events and uh, China, and on top of it, we have to point out the yen, mm -hmm. yen depreciation. All right. What do you think, in your opinion, are some areas that policies, economic policies should be focused on for the second half of this year? Well, we have been doing on the interest rate. Uh, the, the Bank of Korea could not lower even further. So 1.5 percent, the base rate will be the minimum. And so there will be no potential, you know, breakthrough through interest rate policy. And we've been injecting a lot of money. So monetary policy has been active. So we actually have been doing almost everything except for can. one thing. One mm -hmm. thing is that is exchange rate policy. Oh. So government has been very reluctant to intervene actively in the exchange rate market. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Japan has, has been conducting that very active uh, exchange rate policy for two years. And, uh, and the European, the same mm -hmm. thing. So I think the, the only thing possible policy choice for the government is exchange rate policy, which I think is, uh, I mean, the government is going to be very reluctant to openly mm. speaking about exchange rate policy. All right, let's see what they do, what the government does right. about that exchange rate policy right. from here on out. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in today, Professor. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right, that wraps it up for today's edition of Business Daily. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place. Thanks for watching and have a great day.